Hi folks, new project today. I still have a couple of those little vases, uh, containers here, so I want to make a pour over those as well. I have two more and I will leave those for Patrick when he's starting to start pouring. I have premixed a couple of the colors. We have a red here, phthalo blue, white, turquoise, metallic rose and gold. So guess what, which color is going to go with what? <laughs> Um, so going to make one in the reddish gold tones and one into the bluish tones again. Surprise, surprise. But first, before we start, I have some uh, kitchen wipes. They are pretty nice. Because first thing we want to do is cleaning off any greasy residue probably that they might have from the store, from transportation, from storage, whatsoever. So I just want to have them clean, that the paint can grip onto it. And if you need your paint to grip even better to your vases, um, you can put a layer of gesso underneath as well. So the gesso is going to dry in there and the paint is something more to grip onto than just the glass, because glass is a pretty slippery texture, you know? Um, yeah, this is what you could do probably. I'm not going to do this, but you could. Um, two more larger cups to put your vases onto. Just like that. See that they are somewhat level, and I'm going to bring the camera up a bit better. Um, when the pouring starts so that you can see it better then. So some people like to put the canvas underneath to yeah, catch the drip of paint, but I really cannot stand the look of this paint when it drops down and make a pour out of it. It is just kind of, yeah, I don't like it. So what I usually do, as you know, I have my drip of paint jar where I put all the drip of paint in for larger projects. This is going to go for this project here as well. So we are going with the reds first, so I put everything else aside. And let's see. Layering up those paints is pretty random. So I'm not aiming for any design, look, whatever. Just want to have everything covered in paint, hopefully with a cool look. But especially in those raised pores, you really cannot, really cannot <laughs> um, predict how it's going to look like. Probably it's a wise idea to have your paint a bit thicker than usual, just to have it not that runny, which I didn't really do for this pour here. I just grabbed the premix paint that I did for Patrick. Um, so it's the same consistency as I usually have for the pores themselves. And also for the amount of paint, I have no clue. So I just use this cup here. This might probably be too much, but if so, I can stop at some point. First I usually pour around the, the sides a bit, so that all the edges probably have some paint. Otherwise you're getting those noses around this entire thing. And so the paint can just flow a bit better. little circles or waves, whatever you like, just to have some distortions in the design, which is running over the sides in the end, to make it look more interesting. Moving 
this propane should already do it. So this is a pretty simple and easy thing. So it's quickly done. You can do pretty nice things with it. Again, if your paint was thicker, everything would be yeah, a bit more in place. So here it was a bit runny, but yeah, it's, it's still fun. So give it a try if you haven't done already. I will put this base aside for a moment. Going to cover the entire thing with blue. Like in the first one, but just like, like that with your fingers. To have a cover of paint over it. And we are good to go. Yeah, the rest is probably done by gravity already. Yeah, this one is going to look pretty cool, I hope. Not so much a fan of the red one, design-wise. Um, probably it was too thin, but this looks pretty promising from the design. It is totally my taste. So I will let those two dry, get back to you when they are dry. And yeah, let's see if we were lucky. And for those who don't know, this is my drip off jar. So where all the paint is in. It usually gets a grayish, bluish tone because so much paint is in there from different colors. I just scrape everything up, put it in there, let it be, and when I have really large canvases I make this color as a base color so that the paint can glide over it easily and it yeah, saves me paint, helps a lot and yeah, saves paint. <laughs> so if you haven't done this before and you find the idea ingenious, go ahead. So since my vases are still drying and I have some of the paint left that I have prepared for it, so the bluish and the reddish version, I just feel, I don't know, creative and want to use it for a regular canvas. Just, yeah, I don't know, just be bold and use them. I will pour them onto there and see if this gives me a cool design or not. paint was standing quite a bit it is already intermixed a bit I do not expect to have yeah anything groundbreaking cool but why not try Well, that was quick and dirty. Um, I actually like it much more than I anticipated. So this might end up cool when it's dry. So it doesn't have any cells, but it has PVA glue. 
so I expect some cells to pop up in some areas. We will see how this one dries. So what do you think until this stage? I think the paint was not wasted. So here we go with the result judgment and not my favorite. I did mess up. So let's begin with the red one. Um, this is the result. It is pretty cute though. So I like the gold, I like some areas of the, the red, but it mostly transitioned into yeah, pink, which didn't really want to have for this um, look. It is cool though as a race, so I do not really hate it, but I hope for something better. I'm not really sure if I'm going to leave it as is or if I pour one time over it. Um, perhaps with a thicker consistency as it was. Yeah, what do you think about it? The second one, which I initially really, really loved how the design looked, look at this prettiness here. I loved it, but worst case scenario, I flipped it over. So I wanted to remove the droplets on the bottom side here and it fell. It fell on my desk. So I had to grab it and put it back on its um, dripping station. <laughs> and of course I had some fingerprints, I tried to cover them and once I've covered everything it dropped again. So I think it was not intended to be to be cool, I don't know. It still is kind of pretty at some areas, so it looks like like marble at some points and the especially here the gold is really cool and lacing and shiny but overall it has yeah more more flaws than I would top for I'd say. Yeah anyways let me know your opinion about this one here as well. Especially this side here is pretty nice. Perhaps we can put the rest towards the wall. <laughs> I don't know. And finally, this is the final result of the little pour with the extra paint. I must say it is way cooler than I expected it to be. So I have again the gold shiny and shimmering here. I have some of the lacing with the rose metallic in the red. This is pretty cool. Not sure if it's worth to be hung on the wall. I don't know. Yeah, but that's the results video. Um, let me know your thoughts if I should re-pour them and if so I will make it for a coming video. This one, it, it is nice. I will keep it for now and see if I want to paint something over it or if I just leave it as is or we will see. You can also let me know what you think about this one. So yeah, that's everything for today. I will make some more pours for another project which again involves you all and we will see in the next video pretty soon. And Patrick is going to make some pours this week as well. So be excited, stay tuned and thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>